I'd like to raise a glass to Michael Ferguson, the director of The Seeds of Death, who died shortly after this commentary was recorded. Hello, this is Happy Times and Places, where as an antidote to lots of the discourse about Doctor Who online, we try to accentuate the positive and find our favourite things about a Doctor Who story. So I've got a guest to choose one and to tell me what they like about it. Midway sending now, Godborough receiving now. Yes, hello everybody. I, uh, Toby, hi. I am Jay Butler-Moore and I'm a local government minion in my working life and um, a songwriter and I'm on YouTube and SoundCloud and stuff and I'm in a band called Dirge. But I'm here to talk about my seven favourite things uh, about the seeds of death. Well, hello everybody. Uh, Welcome to this episode of Happy Times and Places, which begins a new story for us, The Seeds of Death, starring Patrick Troughton. So we've heard from Jay, who uh, is going to be in charge of us for the next six episodes, telling us what to like. I'd be interested to see what I, I... I haven't really sort of thought about this before now. I just went, what am I in the mood to watch? I, I, I knew I needed to do a Troughton and the Troughton I most wanted to watch uh, that I had somebody uh, prepared for was this one. So um, here we go. Bit of Patrick Troughton. And I want you to press play in three, two, one, go. Oh, she went three, two, one on the video that's quite funny um so uh, i am watching the special edition uh, i've had this in many forms because this was the first vhs i bought for something ridiculous like i mean I saved up and it was christmas and birthday money uh and it was was it 49.99 39 it was I mean, it was the equivalent of a car. I mean, it was really expensive. It was before... I remember when videos went down to 9 99 and that seemed like they were, a, you know, a, a bargain compared to what they used to be like because you had to get them for sort of the prices that rental shops would buy them for and they would get that money back. So, so I had the whole of The Seeds of Death edited together in one long form from whichever prints they could grab. Uh... Oh, and this was a shock to me when I got the the longer version because because the music because obviously it, it cut out the bit where it said part one. It's a very odd choice of computer voice. Um, it's not like many computer voices that we know from Doctor Who. Um, Michael Ferguson is a very interesting director, and he makes very interesting choices, especially on sort of who he, who he chooses to shoot and things like that. Um, Rick Felgate, who was Michael Ferguson, the director's brother-in-law. Was he married to Michael Ferguson's sister, I think? Yes. And then his sister, Rick Felgate's sister, was Cynthia Felgate, who was in charge of play school. I think that's how it worked. Um, Lots of interesting shots already. Uh, He he always keeps it visually interesting without, I would say, being avant-garde Michael Ferguson. And I I realised that actually the last story I did for this, um, which also has lots of shots of people's feet before you see them, is uh, The War Machines, which is also directed by Michael Ferguson. Now, I normally try and mix it up a bit to get a bit of variety, and he he only directed four stories. Um, But, oh, there was a bit of a wobbly console, not a wobbly set. That's... uh, That's different. Uh, uh, I'll allow a wobbly console. Um, The 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 mark that now this is this is very interesting. This because uh, this shot because uh, whoever's talking is out of focus uh, in this scene between Miss Kelly and Harry Taub as Osgood. Uh, 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 Well, yeah, for, for, for. for, 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 yeah, for at least the beginning of that scene, he chooses to go out of focus on the person that's talking and in focus for the person that isn't. Uh, and as I say, it's sort of because you're sort of shooting live, as it were, as live. Um, I always thought that was a bit weird that he sort of blows her a kiss, but it looks a bit strange. Because um, uh, he's shooting as live, um, you know, he's always mixing it up a little bit. And, and, I th- and, and so I think there are some bits that you probably wouldn't... I like the, I like the way Brent goes... Uh, 
Goody Got Here Before the Old Man Arrived. He's very natural. He's a very naturalistic actor, I think, Rick Felgate. Um, in, in never plays particularly... No, he always plays parts that he brings good value to that are never sort of showy parts. And so he isn't showy. He he, he does absolutely the job. I, I, I uh, the, It amuses me that the, the fact that we had a close-up of Harry Tauber's Osgood's briefcase. And I think that's a gag, isn't it? It's going, we're all in futuristic costumes and all of that, but here's a guy with a briefcase like a civil servant. And I, it, it has to be a sort of gag because it's the sort of thing that my brothers and sisters would have looked at and go oh god they're all in space but they've got briefcases but i think i think they're sort of going these are all civil servants these are all middle-aged guys on on their way to work uh and i, and I think they've embraced that um i i have to say i'm not sure i think the uh work wear of choice for men in the future is the most flattering because they are all middle-aged men with these sort of funny one pieces that show where their pants would be uh, which which I think is a choice, I guess. Um, but uh, so it's sort of shiny. It's probably quite sweaty as well. Sweaty and it shows you where your pants are. Uh, and there's a camera crash into a console. Um, but I like Harry Taub, an excellent actor uh, and a very recognisable face on, on television. And yet both times he's in Doctor Who, he's brought in to be sort of, oh, yeah, he's the actor we know. Oh, they've killed him! Uh, because he also gets eaten by a chair. No, well, su suffocated by a chair in terror of the Autons. So Harry Tower was basically brought into Doctor Who twice to be a, a shock death. Um, uh, oh, Christopher Cole, who, as I record this, has just passed away i love christopher cole who is phipps and also uh stubs in the mutants uh and martin court there uh uh who'd been in the keys of marinus don't do anything now harvey we never hear about again i wonder if harvey is no harvey must be in the script but i, I wondered if michael ferguson had chucked him in to have a stunt because it's alan chuns of course brilliant uh stuntman who who dies by hurling himself over the console but later on when they when when fusion has to lie about what's happened to everybody he goes uh, osgood just went out and uh, Locke was ki killed by osgood nobody goes and, and harvey what happened to him harvey uh, is, is basically just on the missing persons list in the future nobody ever knows what happened to harvey and nobody actually asks or or cares um poor old harvey osgood's gone too far this time god i watched this over and over again because it was it was the only video I had. I mean, I'd sometimes watch it twice in a day. Um, but this episode was sort of white. It was a not very good quality. Episode two is much better. Uh, and so the bridge between episodes one and two, the quality suddenly improves because they just got whatever copy they had on the shelf. Um, I mean, Harry Taub is not in this very long at all, is he? Uh, he's very good. Uh, he's a very good actor um, and, and continued acting. Right up to the end, he had quite a decent stint in EastEnders. Was he married by Janine or something like that? But he's in all the carry-ons and he, even in the uh, the the day-to-day. -day. So he crossed he crossed uh, you know comedy generations. Worked a lot for the National Theatre. Excellent, excellent. And he wrote the obituary for Alan Tilburn, who played Forrester in Planet of Giants for The Guardian, I think. So they were mates, uh, and 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 he did the Roger Delgado documentary for 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 john kelly um so he was around when we were doing the range but i never had the pleasure and then then he died and it was like, oh um because uh, you sort of thought he was still around he was still working um and a death by mirror there so i mean so, so far one of them you know one of the more familiar faces uh has has been the first to die and it, I, I love the way and I, there must be have been recording breaks and things so it's so it feels quite unusual already that because you've got everything done from the point of view of the monster so you don't see the monster um ronald lee hunt as uh commander radner must have thought is uh, all his christmases had come at once because uh weren't the first two dvds or certain no no amongst the first two vhs's sorry were revenge of the cybermen and the seeds of doom uh, seeds of death and he's in both of them uh so he must have had a, a, a bumper set of royalty checks he gets a slightly he his is not wipe clean his costume his is slightly more absorbent so obviously if you if you if, if you're of a higher rank you get uh, you get a bit of felt uh, on uh, in your costume rather than 
uh, shiny latex, whatever it is. So how far are we in? This is the first we've seen of the TARDIS crew. So the story is well and truly underway. Uh, I like the starting of the of the shot of the TARDIS console. It's always a sign of a good a good piece of uh, design if you can start with a close up of it. Um, and 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 uh, I I, the, I I love Zoe's costume from the Crotons. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, it's a, yes, it's a nice little setup, isn't it? Of where, where on earth are we? Um, uh, and uh, and of course the Doctor, he looks good in his short sleeved shirt, doesn't he? And and and, and it's it, I I quite like the way he's he's sort of going that the 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 control is stiff, which means that if if we don't quite we we're not going to be able to match up completely what the camera outside is doing with me twisting the thing, and it doesn't matter because it's jerky because I'm I'm struggling with it myself. He's got a brilliant face, hasn't he? Look at that, that deep in, deep in thought. You can see the, the, the machinery whirring inside his head. He's so, he's so clever and uh, uh, interesting. Uh, trying. It's quite an odd museum, this, and it's quite odd what, what, what the TARDIS camera manages to pick up as well. Um, has it suddenly got a close up of of that? That we're in a museum. The, the space but but not not the space museum look yeah what well, i mean hang on where's what's the camera on now are those pictures in the space museum or are, are or has eldred got a spitfire next to a hot air balloon it's now it's never quite explained uh but I, lo I, I love the the way these three look on camera and they look as a gang uh wait for me uh oh, i love the way it trots out look at that he's brilliant uh and they must be going from it's recording but i wonder because because with with him putting the coat on it you know you feel like you're going from the inside to the outside that's very very clever so yeah there's gagarin i mean i'm presumably it's just gagarin's because they haven't got a stuffed yuri gagarin in in the in the museum um but but where's the spitfire and the hot air balloon um who knows who knows maybe the t it was the tardis's psychic psychic circuits picking up what was in the museum's archives or something uh, and this is this is very handy uh to let us know that this story is about tmat um which it's an interesting choice for Professor Eldred's museum, especially as his one character trait is that he hates T Matt and likes rockets. Uh, but but again, that's a lovely you know where are they? And the guys pulled a gun on them. Oh, Terry Scully as Fusion. Um, what a difficult task he has to pull off because he's he's very weedy and he's uh, he will do anything to stay alive. Um, and yet he's terribly sympathetic and he has to do quite sort of histrionic stuff and you need an actor with believable nervous energy and and I think he's a br he's an excellent piece of casting um, and, and I think a lot of actors would struggle to pitch this performance right and he, he gets it bang on uh, and I and I think as as, as uh history tells us that um you know there was a there was a sort of nervous quality about about dear old terry scully he had a nervous breakdown when he's playing vic thatcher in survivors and uh, and didn't work for a bit and was replaced in survivors because he couldn't carry on filming and uh so so obviously you know he was channeling a lot of his own uh you know twitchy twitchy uh uh, vulnerability uh, all of which comes through and makes him a you know a, a, a likable and and uh, 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 vulnerable performer um, but of course at, at what cost uh, what we get obviously all down the line is 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 uh, is, uh, is an excellent performance um, that's what we get out of it so we must be grateful because uh, uh, look and the camera can stay on him while all this is happening because normally in a scene like this you'd you'd be on the monster talking but we can't see the monster yet but it trusts the actor and it's quite right to because he's great 
Uh, and I like and Christopher Cole has has there was, he has a solid dependability, a, a, a straightforward decency about him. Uh, I, I was always very cross because I like Phipps uh, and uh, I want to live. Yeah, see that's really hard, and and no, not people wouldn't, not a lot of people wouldn't go that far with that, or if they did, they wouldn't pull it off. And I, I think he's he's great. Um, d d d he loves this set, Michael Ferguson. Look at I go right, Louise, the lovely Louise Payo, stand behind that perspex and be out of focus again, because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of setting up in this episode, and I'm going to make it look really interesting. Uh, Michael Ferguson, one of the great. Doctor Who directors. Uh, look at the depth of field there, or whatever you call it. A man far away and, and, and somebody up close. Uh, I, 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 I like, uh, 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 you know, I like the way that he's positioning his actors here. E even though, I, I mean, poor old Ronald. I suspect Ronald Lee Hunt probably turned up in a, in a tweed jacket and a cravat. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, and, and probably was very dignified and probably... Uh, you know, had a cigarette and going, so what am I wearing, darling? They go, uh, this sort of rather shabby one piece. <laughs> uh, I, 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 and, and Hugh Morton turns up, like you've got all these sort of rather grand, uh, 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 respectable, um, very, you know, very British fellows. <laughs> you deck At least Philip Ray as Eldred gets a... Uh, a, a plastic tank top it's not a tank top is it what they called those those short sleeve body warmers um that he looks like he's he sort of looks a bit like he skinned an ice warrior doesn't he uh, uh but um oh i saw somebody in the crew i saw a bit of shadow there uh behind jamie interesting um what, what, yeah why have i <laughs> uh philip ray was uh he uh He's in one of the Hancocks, isn't he? Is he the Twelve Angry Men of the of the Hancock? Um, I remember. Um, I remember once being phoned up when they were doing this DVD, actually, and it was Steve Broster who was making the uh, the uh, uh, the 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 new making of. Uh, and he said, "Toby, I'm interviewing Wendy Padbury, and we can't remember the name of the guy who played Professor Eldred." I went. Philip Ray? And went, right, thank you very much, bye. <laughs> I mean, thank God for the internet. I mean, they had the internet then, so I don't know why they phoned me. Maybe they had a bad bad internet signal, but they could get a phone, so they sent out the, uh, the uh, you know, they put up the anorak signal or whatever. But anyway, I was happy to help. Um, I, I always, I was, as, you know, as somebody that watched Doctor Who from afar in the countryside in the middle of nowhere, the idea that I might even have an imprint. So I don't, because I don't think I'm on the... Uh, the, my, my ex-wife narrates that documentary actually um, but uh, uh, I uh, or she narrates one called Lords of the, yeah she narrates a documentary that's on there anyway uh, but um, so actually I wonder if this is her complimentary copy oh dear sorry yeah anyway um, <laughs> uh, yes but so the idea that I might have even the smallest little fingerprint uh, on on an official release that, that i'm otherwise you know fills me with joy especially as this was my first as a it was slightly sport for me because i didn't get many doctor who magazines but um there was a doctor who magazine uh that i did get for some reason uh, and somebody had written in and said on the vhs of uh uh the, the the seeds of death you know where where are the cliffhangers because it's all been edited together and i as a you know as a fan i'd like to know where the cliffhangers are so obviously doctor Who magazine said well there this one there's uh the, the, the end of episode one uh, is where Locke gets killed and so when as soon as Locke comes on you go well i know he's gonna die then at the end episode three brent touches the seed thing and it and you go well he's presumably gonna die then so that's brent well i know he's gonna die uh, uh, episode four uh phipps is killed and then blah -de -blah -de -blah, so you go okay Okay, Phipps dies. So, so you suddenly go. Well, I'm. I sort of pretty much know how every single supporting character dies now. And for some reason, I knew Osgood died early on. Um, so, actually, pr pretty much the fate of it. And one of the reasons, you know, you I, I, you like stories like this, and they're populated with 
actors characters played by good actors is that it's that thing of the poseidon adventure or the towering inferno you play the game of oh i I like them i hope they don't die or who's gonna die next or they're asking for trouble they're gonna die um and so so i had that joy if you like taken away from me with this one because i pretty much knew when everybody was gonna die uh uh, so I, yeah, so so that, that was a that was a bit of a shame for me, I have to say, um, uh, because the, yeah, I'd got that magazine before, uh, bef- before I got the I got the you play your game, we'll play ours. Uh, Martin Court um, is uh, is still about. I occasionally have a drink with Martin in in london uh he was still great friends with peter stenson who was also with him avoid they were both in the keys of marinus martin plays several parts in the keys of marinus so it's it's interesting to see him t- turn up here because he did you know he did that sort of he did quite a lot of early telly but then has sort of largely directed theater and things like that but he's still about going strong uh he's actually a facebook friend of mine under his real name um which i won't share with you because because Sorry, that sounded. That didn't, that didn't mean so. I'm not going. I'm squandering this uh, small part of player in Doctor Who. I just, it's just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a private thing. Um, uh, I poor old Louise Payer has to spend the whole thing sort of looking rather superior. She was Australian. Uh, she was a. a, a, a and 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 quite a sort of i i did a thing with i i thought i'd never get the chance to meet her and i actually did i did a uh a commentary with her for for phantom films and it was a joy for me because i'm i i rather like miss kelly uh she's she's good fun uh and uh, because she was you know australia based i thought well i'm never gonna get the chance um and and she she sort of intimated she would do a who's round and i emailed her and i never heard back and and I think it's because she she got a bit poorly, and then she was better, or uh, something had happened in her personal life. So anyway, but I don't. If somebody doesn't reply, I don't then badger them. Um, but then, a couple of years later, I had the the opportunity, and she. I'm sure she used the phrase "dog's balls" about something, to, which tells you all you need to know about how perhaps different Luis Payer was from the the very. Uh, you know proper miss kelly and and quite and she's very british isn't she but uh she was she was she was quite australian uh I, I, sorry australian listeners but i i i i i consider using the phrase dog's balls to be quite australian i don't know why uh uh i i quite like the fact that eldred then tells him to to stuff it uh Yeah, um, uh, Ronald Lee Hunt's an, an an odd sort of actor because it's it, it fulfills a, a great purpose in in an, a great number of British programs, but it, it it's a certain sort of stoical, sort of stiff kind of acting that uh, that we don't do anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, But but he absolutely looks looks the part. Um, but I yes I don't know how how interesting an actor he is. Um, and I and and yeah that is one heck of a costume. And, and I love yeah I suppose I suppose no you can do that now you can switch a call through but quite like the fact that yeah the moon base can call Commander Radner. Uh, on on Professor Eldred's telly, um, so yeah, this is where Martin Court gets it. Although he is in next week, and that's a great, that's great. The, all those cu- quick cuts again, because you know you, the multi-camera thing. The, 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 my, Michael Ferguson is, you know, he, he he keeps the pace going. Those those cuts from face to face to face. That's a terrific episode ending, and that's a great because it's a fantastic the makeup. Uh, well, the the half mask on Alan Bennion, the mighty, the legendary Alan Bennion as Sla is uh, is is a is a cracking close up uh, for the end. Um, uh, 
And it's a reveal that the Ice Warriors are back, of course, which uh, Steve Peters took us ages to discover uh, what happened to him and uh, only found out very recently. Uh, and I'll tell you about that next week, guys. Um, <laughs> hold your horses. Um, yeah. If you, uh, Michael Ferguson. Yeah, because if you want to know trivial facts about people in Doctor Who who play small roles, I'm your man. Can you wear a plug to be? No, I can't. Uh, I <laughs> and I mean, to be honest, you know, you don't even need to phone me to ask me who Professor Eldred was anymore because you can just look on IMDb. Oh, they could have done then, as I say, perhaps they had a bad signal. But we've had, technology has moved on since. I don't think there were iPhones in those days. Or maybe there were. Um, right. So what has my special guest, who I largely know from um, being very sensible on the internet uh, and always, uh, we're, you know, we're Facebook friends. So I reached out uh, and Jay is going to tell me about episode one. Oh, I've got to choose my favourite thing. Oh, what's my favourite thing about episode one? Well, I can see Michael Ferguson's name. I've pressed pause. Am I going to say Michael Ferguson? Get him out of the way because he's going to he's going to feature at some point because he is such a good director. Um, yeah, because of all that clever shoot. Yeah, I'm going to say Michael Ferguson. Because of the the clever point of view stuff with the alien, the, the 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 quick cutting, the way he shoots people through the sets, the way he he's always on the move to make it fascinating and to make it fast paced. Um, and there's a lot of exposition in that episode, but he, you know, he keeps it he keeps it interesting. Michael Ferguson, I maybe should have gone for him for my overall thing at the end, but he might get claimed before that. There's tactics involved in this silly thing that i've set up <laughs> right here we go um so my first favorite thing coming in right at the beginning is the music um i actually have the music that um music right at the beginning is my ringtone so i've kind of broken that for myself because whenever i watch this dvd I always think my phone's ringing as soon as it starts. Um, so, yeah, there's that music and there's also the kind of jaunty sort of music when there's chases and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that's my first favourite thing. The music is great. I mean, I, I've I actually, when I, when I, when I knew I was going to be doing, when I decided this afternoon that I would probably do this one, and I'm building up to it because I'd actually got another track and planned, and I just thought, no, what am I in the mood for? And I thought, and I thought about uh, this, and, I, and then I just, I did, I found myself going, uh, bang, dong, dong, bang, dong, and, and doing, it is a rather, it's a bit of a racket, I actually think, the music, It's because it's a bit, there aren't many the tunes sort of go all over the place. I'm not musical, so I can't describe what it is I'm trying to explain. But it it is a kind of discordant racket um, that also has a slight sort of weird charm about it. Uh, it's slightly eccentric. Um, uh, it's it's a bit sort of steptoe and sun in space. Um, but anyway, uh, so I I'm charmed by it, and because obviously it's piece of all pieces of music that are rattling around my head because i watched this episode this story so many times um and interesting because I, I it's not one i choose to watch much very often now because i think i you know i i devoured it it's like my my brother liked marmite and then one day sat in it a whole jar threw up and never had it again i think um, so it's not Marmite, the Seeds of Death, as in you either love it or loathe it, like Love and Monsters or something like that. Uh, it's Marmite that if 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 you eat, if you eat the whole thing a lot, uh, you eventually don't need to eat it anymore. Um, but I enjoyed that. That's a really good opening episode. 
that's a really strong there's plenty of incident they kill a famous actor uh Ferguson keeps it rattling along. Uh, we've, we're introduced to the the storyline, the invasion on the moon, but also the the theme, which is don't put all your eggs into a travel map booth, um, but also get over the rocket thing, mate. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, there's that thing about new technology and uh, Doctor Who's occasional, seeing as it's about travelling in space and time, the occasional story where it goes, yes, but I, we really should just do thing with, things with sticks and water because technology is you know, terribly dangerous, you know. You know you're know, you making science fiction, I know. <laughs> but science fiction has a habit of that, going, isn't it? Go, look at all these wondrous future things that will kill you or be bad. Um, but bad is not what the seeds of death is. That was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to watch episode two now. You are going to have to come back to this podcast uh, next time uh, to see what I make of uh, episode two. Um, but for now, uh, thanks very much for for watching uh, and or for listening. Uh, I'm very grateful to you for doing so. I love you to the moon and back, although let's not not go to the moon just yet. Well, thank you very much indeed for listening to Happy Times and Places, presented with tedious inevitability by me, Toby Haydock. My special guest this time around discussing the seeds of death is Jay Butler Moore. I would also like to thank the patrons who make these podcasts possible, and they include Ruben Herfindahl, Peter Harness, Rob Leonard, Stephen Moffat, Richard Straw, David, who I think wants to remain anonymous. Contact me, David. Jenny at Blue Box 99, Paul Carrington, Paul Cook, Peter Crocker, Rob Dawson, John Deere, Chris Dunford Kelk, Chris Phone, Jason Gorman, Siobhan Galichon, Ian Key, Joe Llewellyn, Darren Mackay, Barry Platt, Stephen White, Andrew Willis, Michael Williams, Rich Wiggins, Adam Westwood, Gary Wales, Apollo C. Vermouth, Reynard Toombs, and Sabrina Tirabassi. The music for these podcasts is by Dave Gates and the artwork by Dylan Patterson. If you would like to team at some support to these podcasts, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Toby Haydoke. You get advance material, you get exclusive releases, and you get little chitter chatters with me. It's a fairly egalitarian system, starts from £3 a month, where you get pretty much everything. Uh, and you even get a 10% discount on that if you join up for a year. You can also do Kofi dot com forward slash toby Haydock if you don't want to be tied to a monthly thing and just want to chuck a cup of coffee metaphorically my way but look i know that times are tight and i am very very grateful to anyone who just listens to this stuff but i'll tell you what costs you absolutely nothing that's going to itunes or to apple or to any of your podcast places and giving these five star reviews that really really does help and a couple of lines of nice comment as well uh, just uh, makes me look more attractive to passing punters uh, and it might uh, well it might just tempt them to sample my wares so uh, and my my wares are feeling fairly neglected and sampling them just gives them a little bit of luster so if you want my wares to be more lustrous please do those things but if not look next time speak to you then Thank you. Sorry about the plugging. Has to be done. At least I leave it to the end. I know some podcasts where they keep mentioning it all the way through. I leave it to the end, to the bit that nobody listens to, which I'm sure you're doing right now. You're not listening to this. You're probably listening to Revisionist History with Malcolm Gladwell now or Radio Free Scaro or, or Smirsh Pod or, or any of the other brilliant podcasts out there. But I'll tell you what, if you are still listening, oh, I love you. I love you for carrying on till the bitter end. I'm, I'm trying to make it worth worthwhile by pointing out how pointless it is i don't really know how that works but anyway thanks oh and then there's excess malarkey comedy club where i do my day job which is being a stand-up comedian i've been mc of that comedy club for 24 years it went online during lockdown we were the only comedy club i think to continue weekly online during the whole of the pestilence but we're back in the flesh now in manchester at 8 p.m every tuesday excess malarkey comedy club now uh, chances are many of you most of you don't live anywhere near that well we're still online on the first sunday of every month 8 p.m twitch.tv forward slash excess malarkey me 
and four comics from the international comedy circuit it's absolutely free there is a donation uh, option available but look it's there it's out there online live uh, every first sunday of the month twitch.tv forward slash excess malarkey uh, i mean i don't i don't just talk about doctor who on that but i i managed to i managed to put it in there well, perhaps more often than i should but it's good honest so come along <laughs>